Hello, I'm Frank. I'm an earth scientist and use infrared images to detect and map minerals. In this tutorial, I will show how to process a satellite image that shows the occurrence of mica rich rocks. This tutorial is another follow up on the contribution of my colleagues and me to the Dutch television program Bodem Inzicht. This program aims at creating awareness about minerals in daily products and where these minerals come from. In a previous tutorial, I explained how I used an infrared camera to detect mica in makeup. In this tutorial, I will explain in more detail how the colorful images were constructed that highlighted mica bearing rocks in mining areas in Madagascar. There wasn't time for further explanation of this during the television program. At the University of Twente, where I work, we often use infrared remote sensing techniques to detect minerals at the Earth's surface. Okay, let's get started. The type of mica that is mined in southern Madagascar is phlogopite. This is a magnesium rich mica. I will now show you an infrared image of a piece of phlogopite that we have measured in the lab. These are all mica specimens. And this one here in the middle is a phlogopite. This is a grayscale image of it. Uh, the width of the image is approximately 10 centimeters from here to here. So these are relatively large crystals. I can click on the pixel and then I get a reflectance spectrum that is typical of phlogopite. The reflectance spectrum covers the wavelength range in the infrared between approximately 1000 nanometers and 2450 nanometers. And the reflectance values are shown on the y-axis. So the typical absorption feature of logopite is here at 2330 nanometers, more or less. Um, we're going to use this absorption feature to map mica bearing rocks with uh, remote sensing satellite imagery. And we'll use a band ratio technique for that. Um, what we'll do is we uh, will make a ratio of two reflective bands, one at approximately 2400 nanometers and the other one in the middle of this absorption feature at 2330 nanometers. If we take the ratio of the two, then um, high values, relatively high ratio values, will indicate the presence of an absorption feature. So that's the principle that we're going to use. Now I'm going to show you a satellite image of a mica mining area in southern Madagascar. This is from an area called Ampangrandava. I like the sound of the, sound of the name. Um, this is what part of the image looks like. I can show you a color composite like this. Uh, this is a description of the, the false color composite that is shown here. In red, you can see band 3, in green band 2, and in blue, band 1. What you can see in the image is, uh, are, is a lithological variation in different shades of green. Uh, we can see a drainage system in darker tones. And we can see red pixels which indicate green vegetation. But now we're interested in, uh, in mica bearing rocks. So that's why we're now going to make, or I'm going to make, a band ratio. Now the most important band ratio is the one that I just showed before. On the reflectance spectrum of a local pipe. Okay, so this is the input image. Uh, there will be an output image, uh, and the ratio will be taken between two uh, bands, one at 2400 nanometer and the other one at 2336 nanometers. So we can make this band ratio, we can run it. Okay, it's done. Um, we can do the same with two more band ratios in order to show more spectral variation in this wavelength range. In order to better interpret the different colors in this image, we can convert it to a KML file and export it to Google Earth. We have a great tool for that called Generate KML. You can fill out the dialog and then the KML file is created. I have already done that, so 
I'll show you the result in Google Earth. So this is the color composite of the three ratios. The mica bearing rocks um, are shown in magenta reddish colors. Uh, but there's a lot of interference by other materials at the, at the surface. But let's go to one area where there is a mine, a mica mine, Ampandrandava. And then we can see that there is an, uh, a coincidence between the magenta reddish colors and uh, some mining activity. So if we change the transparency, we can see that there is this, uh, this bluish looking body. Uh, which is being mined. Um, and if we compare there this with the colors, we can see that it is shown in the purplish reddish reddish colors. And so this is most likely a mica bearing rock, and there are a few others in the area that have the similar uh, similar characteristics. But in order to make an accurate map, ground follow up has to be done, and we can also more use more sophisticated techniques for, uh, to map the mineralogy. Then I'll show you also uh, an, uh, a ratio color composite of another mining area. And this is actually the mining area where Eva Kleven has, has gone underground, which was shown in the, in the television program Bodem in Zicht. So this is another area which is called Andranandambo. I will also open the, uh, the KML. We go a little bit more to the east, and then we end up in this area. Well, these are all false anomalies. There are clouds, and there's a lot of vegetation in this area uh, that, uh, that causes these uh, strong colors. But we are going to an area here in the northwest of this image, uh, near a place yeah, which, is, uh, which is a mining area where Flogopite my guy is being mined, which is called Andranandambo. This is the satellite image. And I will change the transparency. And you can see here that this is an area near this town, a river, and um, the mica mines are here in this area. If we then compare the position of this uh, point with the colors, you can see that there are magenta colors here and here, also here, that indicate the presence of, of, of mica bearing rocks. This is how it works. By making these ratio images, we have a very simple technique to enhance the contrast, and certain colors can be related to mica bearing rocks. Uh, but to make an accurate map, yeah, we have to do more, uh, more work. This is the end of the tutorial. I hope that you found it instructive and more tutorials on infrared geology are coming in the future. Thank you for watching. And now it's time for a nice cup of coffee.